Hey, hey, friends, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I just have a question. There's a lot of questions today, so just be ready. Be ready, right? Have you ever felt like quitting? Literally giving up, throwing in the towel? I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Think of a time when you have really felt like being like, I am just done with this. I want to quit. I want to give up. This is not working. Just take a second to think about a circumstance where you felt like that or a time where you actually have quit. Maybe you quit a job that was just intolerable or um, you left a relationship after a long time of doing what it takes to make it work, whatever else. We've all, no matter if I feel like whether you're five or 105, we've all experienced wanting to quit something. When things get hard, we look for ways to ease the pain, and sometimes quitting seems like the absolute best option. And I want to walk with you on this journey because the struggle is real. Y'all, the struggle is real for me more often than I care to admit. And you know I'm all about honesty here, so I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you. I'm just sharing my heart with you, sharing what... I have done to help myself not quit because y'all just going to be real. There are many, many times, sometimes in a week where I literally joke about working at Starbucks and wanting to leave, wanting to throw in the towel with business, both businesses, and just be like, nope, can't do this anymore. Don't want to do this anymore. And so, and I don't like feeling that way. And so I have to, I always take this examination of that. And recently I'll share with you a little bit of a story about um, what I did recently. So you guys know, if you haven't, if you, if you, if this is your first time listening, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I normally talk a lot faster than this and I probably will eventually when I get super excited and motivated and, you know, whatever, I talk really fast and sometimes I just talk slow and just welcome. But you also know that if you've been here even for longer than uh, a couple episodes, you know that uh, in my spare time, in my ho- one of my hobbies is playing cornhole. Um, it's physical, it's uh, active, but it's not too physical to the point where I'm like running around the block sweating. You know, it, it's a good movement for me. It, it's got, I just love it um, for all kinds of reasons. That's for a different episode. Um, but I haven't been playing super long, so I'm still, um, I can't say I'm a beginner at this point. Um, I'm decent. I can hold my own, but I'm nowhere near where I would like to be as far as a competitive player. And there was a really huge tournament conference that just happened this past weekend and we decided to go. It was out of town, so we had to make some arrangements and do all this. And um, we carpooled with um, some other people that are really good players and just, you know, other people that play with us that we really enjoy spending time with. And it was an experience. This is not my first experience doing a all-day cornhole tournament or a two-day event. It was a two-day event and um, what I... There was a time while I was playing, and my, mind you, there's different events and different ways to play and different. There was a women's um, event, and then there was a, a, a blind draw event, and then event for um, my level, my division of singles, and then my division of doubles. So there's a doubles partner and things like that. So if you're unaware, that's kind of how it goes. So on Friday, there's a couple events, and then on Saturday, there's several different events, and you can enter into all of the different ones. But this level is like a conference level. So it's not just like your local something, people gather around. It's like a, it's a bigger deal, uh, Has usually has bigger prizes, bigger points for the league, and all this different stuff. So conferences are generally more for like serious players. And I, although I am not very good and I'm still at the very intermediate level, I consider myself a serious player. I'm very invested into the game. I'm very invested into my growth in the game. I love it. I enjoy it. It's something I do with my spare time and um, all that. All that to just say that, so I went to this event and, you know, it costs money to enter, to go there, travel, stay overnight, all this stuff. And I played a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five events in literally one one game out of all of those. So naturally, what would it feel like? It feels like quitting. It feels like literally you are not good enough to be here. You've been working really, really hard. Y'all, y'all, just going to preface this. I practice cornhole every single day. I would say at most weeks, most days, every day. It's out in my yard. I have, um, I, even in the winter, we have like this 
facility that we kind of makeshift facility that we built. Maybe I can show you a picture of it or something. But um, literally, I play every single day. So I am well prepared. I put the work in. I put the effort in. I am in a league once a week. And then on another day, uh, when we can work around the schedule and things with the family, um, I'll play once or twice a week in public, whether that's, um, you know, my league night or something else. So I'm committed. I practice every single day. I've been working on it. I've actually even took like a boot camp to try to um, just up my game and just learn more about it. I'm still very much uh, in a learning phase. I'm not, you know, I can hold my own. And a lot of you guys are probably thinking it's just cornhole, right? It's not that complicated, but <laughs> you try it <laughs> and you try it against all of these players and you'll realize that it's a lot more complicated to be consistent than you think. Anyway, all that to say that going and spending time and money and energy and practicing and working up to events like this and putting in the time and energy and focus and really just feeling like, hey, I am, you know, I didn't have expectations of winning every single thing, but I did have expectations that I would play really, really well. And it turns out that I just didn't. Um, there's lots of different reasons and different factors and stuff like that. And we could go over that for, for, for a long period of time. But what I'm really boiling it down to is quitting. Um, after playing what I want to say it was a total of like 14 games or something, 13 games, maybe um, I won one game. That's all. That's literally all. And you would think, wow, you suck. Like, why would you come back? Why would you spend money? Why would you do this? You're clearly not good enough to be in this game. Right? Feeling like quitting when things get hard, when you don't have the results you want while you're still putting in the work. Mind, mind you that I didn't sit on the couch for weeks and weeks and then sign up for this and then just show up and be like, oh, well, I really, really failed and know that it's because it's my own fault. Nope. Sometimes you put in the effort, extra effort, more effort. You're working really, really hard and you still don't get that result that you want. That's hard. That feels like I'm done. I'm quitting. I have done everything that I can do to try this and it's not giving me the result that I want. The struggle is real because feel, feelings of quitting and wanting to give up and wanting to be like, this isn't worth it. They come from, there's hardships. They come from failure. They come from going and losing many, many times or outside circumstances come in and change our routine and, uh, or we have unmet expectations. I'll be real. I expected to win more than just one game. So um, of course I have to adjust my expectations, things like that. There's also self-sabotage. Um, we have a lot of that going on. These are, these are these feelings of quitting comes from getting out of your routine or maybe becoming lax, becoming overconfident in certain areas and becoming lax in your focus or whatever. We begin to say things like, "It's just, this is just isn't working or I'm overwhelmed or I completely failed or I am so done. Have you ever thought about that with your business? I literally felt like that three times this week and it's already Wednesday. It's too hard. I am so done with Amazon. There's too much to do. This is too much for one person. I This used to be fun and now it just sucks. Is this worth it? Is this worth my time and energy and effort? Do I still want this? Am I burned out? I'm burned out. I can't do it. I just can't do this. I can't do this. Y'all, are you feeling me? Have you felt any of these things? And I don't mean just about your business. I mean, of course, we're always talking about business here, right? Because this is you know, your Amazon business um, podcast here, right? But if you felt like that at all about anything, like I have put so much time and energy and effort into this and I really once loved it. And now I'm just wondering if it's even worth it. But what we need to do is truly look beyond the surface and examine some things, right? Because these feelings of quitting are just the symptoms. There's a deeper problem. There's a deeper issue that we need to examine and un understand so that we can make a healthy decision and not an emotional decision about, okay, I'm just quitting. I'm done. Because literally after going to this conference and driving and spending the night and doing all this stuff, I was like, literally, I'm done. Like, I, if I can't do this here, I can't do it anywhere. And this is, I'm not sure this is worth the time, energy, and effort that I put into this um, sport in order to grow. And I really think I'm done. I think I'm going to quit. Like, I can't, I just can't do worse. I guess I could have done worse. I could have lost every single game. I could have. And I'm going to talk about that towards the end of this show here. 
um, and what I kind of did to reevaluate those feelings because feelings come and go. What's really at the surface is what we really, really want. And we have to dig through our own mind and through our own heart and through our own expectations to get through to what we really want. Because quitting is always an option. I'm not going to tell you it's not. You have my full permission to quit whenever you want. But not without a true evaluation. So that's what we're kind of doing today because it's perfectly okay to quit or pivot. I know people don't like to talk about quitting, but honestly, that's just real. Sometimes we quit. Sometimes we give up on things that just aren't worth our energy anymore. And guess what? It's okay. Yep, I said it. It's okay. It's okay to give up, walk away, pivot, change, or leave something that's no longer serving you. Full permission granted right here, right now. I will hug you and call you a fellow quitter. Why? Because we put such a bad thing on this, but sometimes it's like, that was no longer serving me, so I'm leaving. But you do not have permission to give up and quit when things are just hard and you can't figure them out or you haven't figured them out and you're just throwing in the towel. Not without a full evaluation. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So we're talking, I'm just talking you through the things that I ask myself when I'm like, you know what, I'm done, I'm quitting. Okay, I give it 24 hours first. Like I allow my feelings to come and go because they're fickle and they will, you know, depending on circumstances. Of course, I had disappointment and shame and, you know, just embarrassment and humiliation for thinking that I could go into this conference and, and, and do any sort of anything. So, right, I have to deal with all those feelings and be like, yeah, this is real. And, um, you know, I feel all this stuff. But do I really want to quit because of this result or don't I? Like what went wrong, what went right. So that's what we're truly going to dig into for a minute. What's beneath the surface of these feelings of giving up and quitting and and trying again? So what's beneath the surface is something isn't working, right? So when we're examining, okay, why do I feel like this? Why do I want to quit? Why, Why does this just feel so much too much? Something is not working. So you're putting time, effort, and energy into something and you're not seeing the result that you want. So one of the first things that we need to think about right there is realistic expectations. You have expectations about something and what success should look like in your business. And if you're not reaching those, um, maybe your expectations need to be adjusted. Maybe you had too high or too much of an expectation for yourself giving the skill level that you're at right now and you expected far more. So that's one of the things you need to think about. Another thing is, are you comparing yourself to others? Are you feeling like quitting because you saw somebody else's numbers and you say, hey, like I started at the same time as that person and they're making six figures and I'm making six (laughs) dollars. You know, you're comparing your story, your circumstances, your business, your result to someone else. That is one of the main things that a lot of people do and they measure their own success or failure based on someone else's milestone. Y'all, stop. Stop. First of all, you have a different measuring stick. You started at a different time. You have a different family. You have a different dynamic. You have different finances. You live in a different location. You cannot compare yourself to anyone else's stuff, period. Because there's no one else that is in your circumstances. There's no one else that's just like you. There's no one else with your thoughts, your desires, your creativity, your life experiences. So there is no comparison. We are all individual, unique people with unique circumstances. So there's no such thing as comparison. You're not going to measure your business or your success against mine or against someone else's. It will never measure the same. There's too many variables. They're just plain different. We're all unique and we all bring something different and special and unique to the table. So no comparison is going to help you measure your own success. It has to be defined by you and you alone. These are just some things that are ca- that cause us to want to quit. We're comparing our circumstances, our life, our business, our results to someone else. Okay? And remember, when you're looking at someone else's stuff, their business, even if it's your bestie or even if it's your... your um 
sister or somebody that is really close to you and you know a lot more of the details and you know, you know, she barely worked and got all this money or she, you know, barely did anything and went viral or, you know, all these different things. There's different things that you can think of and compare yourself to. You have to remember. So what? That's not you. You're not them. They're not you. And there's nothing. There might be similarities in businesses. There's nothing that's identical. So it's not, it's an apples to oranges comparison. And if you compare an apple to an orange, there's some similarities, but there's definitely a lot of differences. They are not the same fruit at all. So comparison comparison is not a measure of whether or not we should quit. Well, so-and-so did this and so-and-so is doing this and I'm right behind them and I should be doing that and I'm not. So I'm a failure. No. Examining whether or not your routine has shifted. Oftentimes, to be honest, oftentimes when we grow in business, we things start to shift. We start to forget the little things. We start to forget about the details that we've used to pay attention to. Your routine might have shifted from COVID, from homeschooling, from being sick, from working remotely, from, you know, your spouse has a a different job or you have to move across the country or you have an illness. It does not matter what the circumstances that have changed, but some of them might have. And that might cause you to have more overwhelm, more stress, and more um, that, those feelings of wanting to just give up. Also, you might be doing things that you weren't doing before, taking up more of your time and energy. Or you might have stopped doing things that you've done before because you've either outgrown them or someone else is doing them. Lots of different things can disrupt our business and cause us to have these feelings of failure and quitting and burnout and overwhelm. And of course, our biggest one is circumstances outside of our control that shifted how we must do things. Amazon is a great example of circumstances outside of our control that we are supposed to comply with, period. They change rules. They change policies. They change things. They don't often uphold these things when they first put them out there, and yet they try to hold us accountable. Yeah, I mean, I could make a whole show of that. And y'all, I'll just be honest. Amazon changing things on a dime on a regular basis is my number one frustration in my business. So I guess I should just quit then, right? You think I'm just going to throw it in the towel, throw in the towel because Amazon changed another policy that really gives me a headache and forces me to do business in a different way. Sure, that's an option. Remember, I gave you permission at the very beginning of this show to quit anything anytime you wanted after you evaluate it. So yeah, I can quit. I can walk away. That's one of the options. Start something new. Start something from scratch. Start start doing something else, shifting something else. Sure. Absolutely. Can. That's always an option. There are always choices. But then you start finding yourself. You're not excited. You're overwhelmed. You just aren't seeing the results, even though you put the hard work in. Let's just pause for a second right there. We've all been in situations where we have put a lot of hard work and energy and time into something and maybe haven't got the results that we're looking for. My question to you is this. My question is, during that circumstance, whatever that was, when you put a lot of hard work in and still didn't see results, how much farther did you go? Did you continue or did you get... Did you quit? Did you pivot? Did you give up? Or did you continue on the path doing the things and trusting the process? See, y'all, it takes a specific mindset to work for yourself. And whether you own an Amazon store or a chiropractic clinic or a farm, sometimes it's just downright difficult to play all the roles. Your CEO and janitor your listing creator and photographer, your product researcher and Amazon Seller Central troubleshooter. You're all of the things. And guess what? That's hard. You're dang right it's hard. But it doesn't have to be all hard forever. I know how you feel. And I want to discuss the possibilities of whether or not you should stay and stay the course when it comes to your Amazon business, or maybe it's time to pivot and change and move on and quit. Again, not forgetting that permission is 100% granted and you owe no one any explanation. Did you know that? 
that's also permission for you. Your mother-in-law, your sister, your brother, your spouse, your cousin, your kids, whoever. You don't need their permission to pivot. You don't need their permission to change. You don't need to give them an explanation of why something didn't work for you or why you decided to move on to something else. But if you want to give them that, you absolutely can. But you don't have to. So do you really need to quit or do you need to pivot? Why are you feeling this way? This is a great question I have for you. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you feeling overwhelmed like you want to quit? Like this is just you've had enough. What are you frustrated with? What makes you not want to pursue your business the way you ought to? Or better, better yet asking, what do you procrastinate and why? Are things getting harder and you just don't understand? Are you working really hard with barely any results? Are you overwhelmed? Is it time to hire someone? The other question is, is fear holding you back? I'll be honest. That's what I evaluated in my um, recent weekend I was talking about was it was fear and humiliation that was causing me to think I'm going to quit. I am never going to be good at this. I'm never going to be as good as all of these people in here. There's hundreds of people in here. I'm never going to be that good. I'm never going to be the champion, you know, things like that. I start talking to myself that way. And then a fear holds me back of like, what if I invested all my time and energy into this hobby of mine and it doesn't play out? Play out where? Play out how? That's the biggest question you have to ask. What are your goals? Why are you here? Why did you start this business to begin with? Because to be honest, to be just putting it out there, Making money is not the primary reason, reason to pursue business. Let me say that again for the people in the back or the people that were coughing or couldn't hear or the radio was too loud or whatever's happening. Making money is not the primary reason to pursue business. You should be excited and passionate about your business. You should be excited to pursue your goals and your dreams. And this is part of your goals and dreams. Your goal and dream isn't just to make money. Okay, I want to make $100,000 a year. Yeah, me too. Okay, why? What do you think you will gain? What are you hoping, expecting to gain with that goal? First of all, do you even have goals? Do you even know why or what you're doing and why? Why are you doing it? Why do you own a business instead of working a nine to five? I am all ears. I would love all of your DMs, all of your comments, all of your emails. Send them all. Kristen at mommyincome.com. Okay? Why? Why did you do this? Because you want more money? Don't just, don't say, I want to make more money. Why do you want to make more money? What do you feel like that money is going to buy you? What is it going to give you? What is the feeling that you want from your business? Because guess what? No one's forcing you to run a business. If you don't like it, change it. If you don't like it, figure out why and change it. And this takes this examination that most people don't want to spend the time to do. But you can do it in 15 minutes or less if you're just flat out honest with yourself. Well, why am I here? Well, I just, I hated my nine to five and I needed something else that I could make more money at. Because I hated my boss. I hated driving. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make more. I only made 15 bucks an hour and I figured I could do better online. Okay. Let's get really clear though about certain expectations about running a business. This is going to help clear the aisles for you so that you can at least think through some of this while you're evaluating and examining whether or not you should quit or give up or keep going or change or, or, or throw in the towel, right? You will never enjoy every task in your business. There are just things that are going to be required of you and or team members that you just don't enjoy. Necessary evils is what we call them. Y'all, I do not ever enjoy talking to Seller Central. Zero percent of the time. But that's required of me in my business to troubleshoot and to get things done and to get things going and to get them to change stupid things that they've done in their business. Yes, I need to be on the phone with them or opening support tickets on a regular basis. That is one of my main jobs 
in my business is to make sure that all these, the, the, I'm plugging holes in the bucket is what I call it. Every time I have to reach out to Seller Central, it usually has to do with my bottom line and how they've taken from that and how I can make it more clear. So if they lose my inventory, I'm chasing down them with invoices. If they are miscalculated something and gave more of a refund than they needed to or a refund is, is I deal with refunds on a regular basis of um, customers sending products that are not mine back to me and trying to cheat the system. So that does cost me and my bottom line. So that's worth, that's a money making task to do. But I 0% enjoy talking to Seller Central, like ever. But it's part of the job, which I accept. I have clear expectations. Now, I don't jump out of bed on Monday mornings and and desire to um, get on the phone with Seller Central, but I know it's part of my job and I accept it. Also, another clear expectation about business ownership. You will never succeed 100% of the time. And if you expect that, you're going to be disappointed on a regular basis. You're not going to succeed at everything. Period. I know that's hard to hear, right? So just let it sink in. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to lose money and you're going to try things that don't work. And whether that's your Amazon business or some other business or some other thing, even a relationship, even cleaning your house, I'm sure there's tasks that you enjoy and tasks that you despise, but there's solutions for all these things. So when you're feeling like you're quitting and you're overwhelmed and it's too hard and and you can't figure it out and you're hitting your head against the wall because Amazon did something stupid again, remembering it's very normal and regular and common in every business to feel stress, to not succeed 100% of the time, to make mistakes. It's very, very normal. Everyone does it all the time. And if anyone does not admit to making mistakes and having failures and and trying things that didn't work, they're just lying. They're just lying. You've got to give yourself permission right now to make space for this. Telling yourself making mistakes is very normal. It doesn't define who you are as a business owner. I made hundreds of mistakes in the beginning. Trial and error. I've lost thousands and thousands of dollars. I've invested in bad partnerships that have cost me almost everything. I've been screwed over. I've had fraudulent money taken from my account. I've been screwed by Amazon multiple times. By other people. My courses have been ripped off and resold for pennies in other sites and other places. It's very normal, regular, and common to have problems. Give yourself permission to accept that, that you're not going to enjoy everything. Now, although we might not enjoy everything in our business, it's a very big red flag if you don't enjoy any of it. That's a big problem. That's time for us to talk about quitting or pivoting. If you no longer enjoy any part of your business, you need to evaluate why. You've got to do some troubleshooting. So if you're burned out and overwhelmed and it's just like, well, I really do love my business. I just need a break. I just need time to breathe and time to think. Guess what? Nothing is going to come crashing down within one week. Nothing. Your business will not close. You will not fail and you will not have to do all that in in, in seven days. Take a day or two or even a week off to gauge. Give yourself the space to ask yourself the questions. Do I still want this? Am I feeling overwhelmed and stressed and stuck because I don't know what I'm doing or because I'm stressed or because I have something to figure out or because Amazon changed something crazy or because I really just don't want this anymore? I thought I did. I really liked it. I really wanted it. What, where have you lost your inspiration? Take time off before you quit to decide. Because you all know you're not going to remain in a honeymoon period, right? We just know that, right? We can, we can just commonly come together and say in the beginning of our business, we're very excited. We're very motivated. We're like, yes, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to crush this. And then when the real work starts to set in, we're like, eh, I don't know about this thing anymore. Taking a week off intentionally to question yourself about what I'm talking about today 
is so valuable because you will get a really good idea of what you want versus what you don't want. If you're honest with yourself, you can say, look, I just want to make more money and this isn't working. And I've tried this and I've tried this and I've tried this. Tried it. How? From how many angles and for how long? Did you really try or did you put in some half-ass effort and hope for a big result? Let's be real. I mean, you're only lying to yourself if you don't honest, you honestly answer these. Y'all, I've done that a lot of times. I'm just going to be honest. I'll be the first one to admit it. There are things I've jumped into half-assed and I've looked at it and be like, oh, yeah, I kind of sort of tried that and it didn't work. Well, because I kind of sort of tried it. What did I expect? Just, just putting that out there, you guys. I'm in the same boat. I feel a lot of these same things that you feel. And so we're just talking about them. Someone has got to be honest. So I'm going to be honest. Evaluate what's working and what isn't working before you throw in the towel, before you quit. What do you like about what you're doing? So these are the real questions. This is really coming down to the evaluation side. So if you've got a pen and paper, write this stuff down. If not, bookmark this, save this, this um, podcast and come back to it and ask yourself these questions. I promise you, this will not be wasted time, even if you only do it for 15 minutes write it down. Now, some of you guys are like, oh, this woo-woo fluffy stuff all the time. You're dang right. It's not just about tactics and tips and hacks. We fail and we succeed based on what's going on inside our heads, how we feel and how we take action about those feelings and thoughts. Our own wants, needs, desires, and outside influences. And there's only one way to fix those, change those, or alter those. And it's evaluating and spending time on thinking about your business and about your goals and about what you really truly want and asking the question, why, 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 over and over and over again. There's no test here. So there's no pass or fail. This is just you getting crystal clear about what you want and what you don't want. So here are some of the questions. What do you like about what you're doing? What do you enjoy? What do you look forward to? What do you hate about what you're doing? What do you hate about your business? What is the least favorite task and the one that you put off till absolutely last because it makes you want to pull your hair out? Again, what do you look forward to within your business? What would you do with your time and energy if you weren't doing this? And what does your inner perfect world look like for your business? Y'all, if you haven't heard of your inner perfect world or the, um, you just, you've got to create your inner perfect world. And it's in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. You can get it on Audible. You can get it on my website, personal copy I can send to you. Um, you can get it on Amazon. You can download it on Kindle. All the book is available. It's 10 bucks. It's not going to kill you. Okay. In chapter three, you're building your in a perfect world and where you're going to examine all of these things. I give you my demonstration of all this and show you exactly how to do your in a perfect world. So what's your in a perfect world? And I do it every single year, usually around this time, because it just makes sense. Year end, taking a review, you know, kind of looking at what's going on. What do I want? What do I need? What's changed? What hasn't changed? What do I want? All these things. Building your in a perfect world for your business and then your personal life too. Guess what? Did you know we're not just built to make money all the time and work, work, work? You have a real life to get to. Relationships, friends, family, hobbies, enjoying your life. It's generally why people want to make more money. So that they can enjoy things that cost money, right? So evaluate what's working and what isn't working. If you find that you still enjoy many parts of your business, but other parts are stressing you out, figure out why. Why don't you like these tasks? What part of your brain needs to be activated to do some of these tasks that you don't like? Can you afford to pay someone else to do them? Can you barter with someone to do some of these tasks and you can do something for them that you love? There is nothing like bartering away something that you hate that for something that you love. So like data entry or um, I love data, but I don't like to collect it. I just like to see it. So I want someone to be like, here's all your numbers. Here's all your things. You evaluate the numbers. But the collecting of the numbers is just 
oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. Like go into this report and gather all these numbers and put them on this spreadsheet and get all these and put them on this spreadsheet and then evaluate all the numbers and the different, oh, that's just not how my brain works. I am more creative and I think in color and I think of in music and like artsy and like those sorts of things like doing data and, and analytics and that kind of thing. Ugh, it just kills me. Can I pay someone else to do it? Not at the moment. So what can I do to make that task better? Plan it in advance. Know exactly what to do when I'm doing. Okay, today's accounting day or this is this day and I'm going to do these tasks in this order and it's just going to be bam, bam, bam and it's on the calendar and I don't have to blow it off. It needs to be done until I can afford to either barter it to someone else. Hey, I'll create your listings for you and write all the words because I'm such a words person and you do all the numbers in the data. Okay, fair trade. If you can't, if you can't afford it, hire it out to someone else that really likes that. There are people that love what you hate. Did you know that? <laughs> my sister and I are a perfect example of polar opposites. My big sister loves numbers and she's an accountant and she does like all the, these numbers and things like that. But she absolutely would die to sit here in front of this camera and talk to people. She would literally rather blend into the wall and be invisible than have to do what I do for a living. So there's always somebody out there that does, that loves what you don't. So find them and see if you can trade or see if you can afford the services there. Why? Because what are you actually buying? You're buying back your peace of mind, right? One task that I don't have to loathe and hate and put off and procrastinate and then it gets me behind and then, you know, the cycle starts all over and then there's shame and guilt because I didn't do that and I pushed it off and now it's affecting my bottom line and the list goes on. Pay someone else, hire it out. Or create a process for yourself that is just without thinking. I don't, I don't have to do this for long. Figure out the fastest way to do the jobs that you hate so that it doesn't have to take forever if you can't afford to hire them out. If you find you're not enjoying any of the business at all and you've given it consistent time and consistent effort, and I'm talking six months or more, maybe it might be time to move on that's okay too. The question is, the, the, the reality is we don't move on because things are hard. We don't quit because we don't understand something. We learn, we ask, we ask for help, we get help. We don't quit when we haven't given it the effort it deserves. We don't quit when we can't figure out the hard things. We don't quit we stop, we pause, we break, we evaluate, we learn. Learning is so essential for every part of every business or every job. There's always extended learning. We decide to make changes or pivot when our jobs and our businesses and our tasks do not align with our inner perfect world. What is your inner perfect world? You got to define that. Again, get my book, Dream Big, Step Small. And in chapter three, it defines exactly how you set up and go through and create your own in a perfect world. If you're doing tons of RA and it isn't suiting your lifestyle, it's time to change to something different. That means you're evaluating. You're like, well, I like the money I'm earning and I do enjoy some of this, but I want to do it a lot less. Or I'm getting tired of running around from store to store gathering stuff and I'm running out of things to do and I'm growing, but it's hard. Maybe it's time to introduce wholesale wholesale into your business. If you don't like packing and shipping, it's time for a prep center or to hire someone a couple days a week to help you. It doesn't have to break the bank. And even if it does at first, I promise you're going to be okay and you're going to thank me later. Every single time I've had to hire someone or outsource something, it hurt my bottom line for the first month or two. And then exponential growth happened. My biggest area of growth was when I hired a prep center. And in the first couple of months, it was an ouch. We had to pay someone per unit to prep all of our stuff, but we didn't have to receive pallets. We didn't have to put tape on boxes. We didn't have to put FN SKU stickers on anything. We didn't have to peel stickers. We didn't have to poly bag. It was so worth the trade. Right. Here's another thing. If you don't like to create listings, it's time to hire someone else or barter. You don't have to like everything, but you still have to get it done if it's part of your business. If you're frustrated with pictures and images, it's time to hire a service or 
watch module four of Wholesale Bundles 3.0, the brand new Wholesale Bundles 3.0. Yes, I said that. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> If you haven't if you haven't seen or heard already, Wholesale Bundles is absolutely brand new and fully released and ready for you. Just haven't made an official announcement yet because honestly, I'm taking my own advice. I'm taking some time off to just breathe and to just evaluate and just to take the rest of the year off to um, celebrate that Wholesale Bundles is all brand new and that's all I've been doing for the past eight months. But if you don't enjoy some of this, it's time to learn a new skill. In the Wholesale Bundles 3.0 or 3.0 course, it teaches you how to create amazing images for your products. But if you hate that part and you're just not good at it, we also have resources for you to hire that out. If you don't enjoy finding products to sell and research what's working, you can make a change. Hire someone. If you don't like retail arbitrage anymore, try wholesale. If you hate bundles, then go back to retail arbitrage or do wholesale or do Etsy. Like, I don't know. But evaluate and decide your own truth and what you really want. Do more of what you love and less of what you don't. And if you don't love any of it, if you don't enjoy or look forward to any part of your business, it's time for a change. And last and finally, it all comes down again to the why. It comes down to the why. Examine why you started this in the first place. And has that changed? Things change all the time. So we can't just do this uh, in the beginning. Okay, 10 years ago, I started this business and this is what I wanted. And now what has changed? Lots. <laughs> 10 months ago, it could even be. Have your circumstances changed? Have your goals, your desires, or even your values, have they changed a little? That Those actually change. You're not, you don't have to be, none of those things have to be set in stone. Are your goals still the same? What has shifted? And how can you accommodate that? I'll give you an example. There was a time I knew I was getting really close to getting a million dollar business. Now, it was never really a goal of mine to be like, oh my gosh, I want to hit a million dollars. It only became into my sights when I realized how, how possible it was. I never thought of that. I was just worried about making a hundred bucks a week to start my business. I didn't have a goal of a million dollars. I just needed to get groceries. Like, that's just honest. But as I approached getting to that million, thinking this is possible, or like I remember the one year going, I know that next year, if we continue on this path, we are going to break that million dollar number. And that excited me. It made me feel like it was possible. It made me want to work just a little bit harder to get to that goal. And sure enough, when it became a goal, I wanted it. And I worked really, really hard. Me and my team worked really hard. And we got to that place. And we stayed at that place for several years. But after the reevaluation of a couple of years, we realized we don't really need to maintain a million dollar business to have the lifestyle and salary that we want. We don't need to grow. We want to maintain where we are and we want to bring new bundles to the table when other ones fill, fizzle out. We want to be a well-oiled machine that's consistent and enjoyable and helps us meet our goals. And you know what? The million dollar business was nice, but it also wasn't necessary. We realized that it was fun and exciting to hit goals like that and to do that, but we realized that the workload also doubled. We had to hire extra staff. We had to do different things. And we realized we're actually a lot more content at about the 650 to 850 range. We don't need to make a million dollars and work that hard. We don't have to. It's a lot less to manage, to manage less than that. So we pared down our business on purpose. Most people out there are saying, grow, 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 get big, get this. And I thought, you know what? I don't want that. What I want is peace and freedom and excitement and the space to be able to be creative. And that's what I love about my bundle business is that I get to get new, like I'm, I'm dawning on what excites me the most in business, which is literally next month. I get to go to trade, it's trade show season. That's what I call it. Like there's football season, there's summer, there's ugh, winter, which I hate, but there's trade show season. And trade show season is absolutely my favorite. Why? Because I get motivated and inspired with my creativity to start 
creating new bundles for the new season. What's trending? What's new? What can I get my hands on? What's different? What are the customers looking for? Like, I love that part. Can you see how my tone just changed? So what is that for you? It's just your permission to be like, you know what? I didn't quit my business because it got hard. I scaled it back. I realized that I don't need to run a million dollar establishment to have the life I want. As a matter of fact, I don't want to. Been there, done that. It was a lot of work. And I'm not scared of work. I actually love work. I literally feel like I was built to like work all the time. But the work that I do is enjoyable for me. That's why it doesn't feel like work. I'm not out there shoveling holes and digging post holes and th like things like that or like bricks like this summer um we're remodeling our cottage mainly due to force because we had a flood um and so we spent all summer remodeling um and li literally down to the bare studs the floors everything and we took out this huge fireplace which was all brick y'all i never want to see touch smell or feel another brick in my entire life it's work i never want to do but i did do it because it was necessary. But it's like, I know th this on the list of things I will never do again is literally roofing. Number one, never doing roofing again. Never, ever. Yes, I've done roofing in, in our own cottage and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Never. Cheers and shout outs and much love and lots of extra thousands of dollars for roofers because I will pay you because I can, I will never do roofing again. Same thing with bricks. Same thing with bricks. Absolutely not. I'm not sledgehammering bricks. I'm not hauling them in um, wheelbarrows ever again not happening. You know, it's work. I don't mind work, but I like work that I enjoy. So those things will be outsourced, right? Re-examining what you really want and what you're willing to do to get there. Because last truth bomb here, everything costs something. I wish that I could sit here and tell you that if you hit a million dollar business, it's going to be sunshines and rainbows and everything's all going to be amazing and you're going to skip down the yellow brick road and be living happily ever after. Nope. You're just going to have more work to do. As long as it's work that you enjoy, you're not going to hate it. Then it might be more. You might have to outsource more. You're going to have to manage more. So everything's going to cost something. It costs money, costs time, costs energy, costs mental space, costs something. You have to figure out what is va most valuable to you and what are you willing to give up to have what is most valuable. And I will tell you what was most valuable to me after re-examining all these things was, I don't want a million dollar business. I want a happy, peaceful, freedom lifestyle. That's what I want. I want my family to be happy, happy and healthy. I want my relationships to be happy and healthy. I want to feel well-rounded. I don't want to feel like a workaholic all the time. I want to do work that inspires me and motivates me and, and I, the work that I enjoy and can't wait to get to. And although a million dollar business was nice, six figures is plenty and comfortable and satisfying and fulfilling. And it doesn't have to be about constant growth. It can just be about this is where I want to be and this is how I want to feel. And turns out I didn't really have to give up very much. Scaling back just meant that I scaled back the work I did. I honed in on the best possible bundle creations. Added a few things here and there. Took a few things here and there away. And my new goal is just to maintain a healthy business that's a well-oiled machine that doesn't require a ton of my time and energy. And then I get to work on parts that really excite me. That's how you can maintain it. You can look at it and be like, this is what I want. It's constant reevaluation once or twice a year. I love to do it at the end of the year, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's in the middle of a year. Is this what I really want? Am I running after the wrong finish line, evaluating that and asking yourself, is this still true for me? And really being honest with yourself. Because I was honest when I'm looking. I'm like, a lot of my failures and problems are my own doing. I procrastinated too long. I waited too long. I didn't get this box put together in time. It didn't get to the prep center in time. Therefore, it didn't make it there in time for Christmas. And I didn't make any sales. My fault. I own that. Should I quit because I screwed up? No. 
I forgive myself. I examine what happened. What can I do better? What can I do differently? And I move forward. What are you doing to move forward? What do you enjoy about your business and what don't you enjoy? Just questions, y'all. Questions I ask myself. Questions I want you to ask yourself. Because I deeply and truly desire for people to operate at their highest potential. But that requires something. It requires honesty. It requires admitting your successes and your failures. It requires change and dedication to your big dream, your big goal, and how you're going to get there. It requires a little bit of sacrifice and a lot of self-evaluation. Because no one's forcing you again to run a business. It's your choice to do so. Y'all, I just want to encourage you that anytime you're feeling like failure and giving up and just throwing in the towel and it's not worth it, revisit this podcast, listen to it, and just take the exam. (laughs) This is like your exam. Ask yourself these questions, write them down or record them. Ask yourself the question and then record it on on your phone or in a video or talk to a friend or just write it down and send it to me. I don't know. Put it out into the universe. Quitting is always an option, but make sure it's the one you really want. Because oftentimes we're on the right path. There's just a lot of roadblocks in our way and we feel like just sitting down and not going any further. I feel you right now. I'm not sure I want to pick up another cornhole bag again right now. I'm still feeling the sting of, of the um, humiliation, I guess. And no one else was humiliating me. I felt humili- humiliated myself. Why? Because I had facts they didn't have. You know? But as that hurts, as that stings, as, as things come and go, we have to think, is this really what I want? I'm really, really going to give up. And what will, how will I feel three years from now if I quit now? Your future self is asking. Now, y'all, I know that sometimes these things are hard to hear and hard to think and hard to feel, and we want to just brush them off and not pay attention to them. But this is the real stuff. We can, we can see how-to videos on YouTube all day long, right? We can figure out how to sell on Amazon, what product to sell, what is this. This is the stuff that really makes or breaks us, is our internal dialogue what we tell ourselves, what stories we believe about our own successes and failures and what we truly want and what we truly desire. This is stuff is the real stuff. Thank you for listening, y'all. I know you could spend an hour somewhere else doing something else and you're here with me on the Amazon files. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me your ears. And I hope that some of this has touched your soul in some way and it will help you to either decide that, yep, this is the end of the road for you or this is just a roadblock that you're going to move out of your way. You have full permission for either one. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.